Well guys, we have officially arrived in the North Country here. We just had a long drive, how about a 10 hour drive? But we are here, and boy, am I excited. There are supposed to be all kinds of different trout species in here from steelhead, brook trout, coaster, splake, brown trout, you really have no idea what you're gonna catch in here because Lake Superior is right over these ice mounds, so there could be any kind of salmon or trout species in here right now. Well, we got our camp put together. It is just cranking hot in that tent right now, which is awesome, but uh, we're gonna go on a little adventure here, guys. We're gonna go check out uh, the Lake Superior shoreline. I am very interested to see what this is gonna look like down here. Let's go check it out.
or we got our stew, our Dutch oven on top of our wood stove here. We're gonna let it go for probably about three hours. I'm assuming it's gonna take a little bit of time for that stew to really start boiling inside of there. So we're gonna let it go for a few hours. We're gonna get some spawn bags tied up and we're gonna get our rods all put together. The goal tomorrow is to fish for steelhead, splake, and coaster brook shell. We have no idea what we're gonna catch. We've just heard that there's fish here and we just came in. We're going on this adventure just kind of blind and we're gonna go figure it out. So we're gonna enjoy a great stew, get all of our gear all put together and be up bright and early in the morning. Well, she's smoking hot, but we're about to have our first couple bites here, guys. Venison beef stew, again for the win. She is hot, smoking hot. The meat is so tender. I've been waiting to get back out here and do this again because this is both Greg and my favorite recipe for sure, favorite stew recipe. We're going to enjoy our dinner here, get some sleep, and we will see you guys first thing in the morning. Guys, this guy came down. This guy came down at 5 a.m. this morning. Watch this. I was in my bed this morning and I heard a car coming down. I'm like, oh my god, dude, these guys get here early. And it was the county truck coming down at like 5:30 this morning. That's the second time he's came down. Got everything all packed up. We're gonna walk down to the river and uh, walk up a couple of bends. Maybe just bounce around a little bit depending on uh, the fish and how it goes, you know. But looks like it's going to be a good day. A little breezy this morning, a little breezy. But yeah, hopefully we can uh, jack some jaws on some fish today. Marking? Yeah, I don't know what they are. Little chubs, maybe, or little trout, you know? Yeah. You know when Steely Dan comes by? Dan. What if we got a big ass king, dude? Hooked into like a 12 pound king, dude. Spools you. It spools you, then gets you in a log over there. Got a little coffee going here, guys. Nothing like a hot cup of coffee when you're watching your rods. I think I filled her up a little too much. Well, we've got two rainbows so far. Um, about a 10 and a half incher and about 11 and a half incher. Greg's got one and my buddy Andy's got one. That's all the luck we've had so far. Actually, a conservation officer just came out and talked to us and said that they do catch some steel out here. And uh, there's a couple other guys around the corner up there. And I guess they got a couple rainbows, a couple just 10 inches. So it doesn't sound like any steelies have been caught out here yet, but we're gonna keep trying and see what happens. Have a good day. You too. What kind of fish are in here? Yeah, most people just come up, yeah, for the rainbow and steelhead. Okay. That's what most people are coming over here for. 
I, you, people catch coho. They do? Yep. In here? Ice fishing, yeah. Really? This time of year? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I, I, it's been a few years since I checked someone I actually caught, caught a few, but yeah, they do. I've seen it. Careful, buddy. Don't fall down one. Well, guys, as you can see, we put in another hard, long day on the water and did not have much success today. We fished from first light this morning all the way till now, which is right before dark. We fished all day long, caught two rainbows that were about 10, 11 inches, but that was it really. Did not hook into any steelhead, but we did learn some very, very useful knowledge. A local angler came down to us and said, hey, the ice shelf right now is pushed too close to the mouth of the river, so that's blocking all the travel from steelhead up into the river. He said he's been fishing regularly for the last few weeks and has not caught a single fish, where typically this time of year he'd be doing very, very well. So this year it just did not set up right, and uh, yeah, it's just how it goes. You don't know if you don't go, and it's always a gamble. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. So our other plan was to originally fish the surf, fish the mouth of this river, but as you can see, see from the drone shots the walls of ice at the mouth of this river are just so high it'd just be impossible to fish off them and it'd be very very dangerous so we're not able to do that we're going to get on our satellites on our phones and look to see some areas of lake where there might be clear of ice right now hopefully we can find a section of lakeshore that's clear of ice and we'll be able to go surf fish tomorrow morning Well, one of the best things about tent camping in the winter and making a big stew like this is you can just put it outside in the Dutch oven and put it right back on the wood stove for tonight's dinner. And that's exactly what we're doing tonight, guys. We're gonna have some stew again for dinner tonight. We wanted to do a chowder of some sort with the fish we caught, but we didn't catch any fish today. So we'll hopefully save that for tomorrow night. And now we're just trying to figure out a game plan for tomorrow. We're gonna look at some of the satellite imaging on our phones and figure out where there might be some areas on the shoreline that's ice free. So we're gonna find some areas where there's not a lot of ice and where we can affect effectively fish from shore on Lake Superior. Ground's a little frozen this morning, guys. I had to go, a little trick, just go in the water a little bit. Well, 
Well, it is a crisp and chilly morning on the shoreline of Lake Superior this morning. But we found a section of shoreline that doesn't have any ice, and we got our lines in the water. So all is good, guys. We're just waiting on a bite. We're going to start here on the shoreline this morning. And if this doesn't pan out, we got a couple different trout lakes for brook trout that we're going to try to ice fish this afternoon. But I'm really, really hoping this will pan out. We will see what happens. We got our spawn bags out in the water, and uh, we're just waiting on a bite. Got him, guys. Got him, baby. Got him, baby. We just had two bites, guys. Well, first fish of the morning, guys, is a little skipper. Let's take a look at him here. Well, first fish of the day, guys. Nice little skipper. Great to see, though. Great start to the day. We just had two bites back to back, so we're going to get him back and hopefully catch his grandpa. There you go, little buddy. All right, guys. Well, we've had a couple bites. Yep, 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 yep. Got him, guys. Got him. There we go. <laughs> there we go, baby. No, oh, he's running at me. He's running at me, guys. He's running at me a million mile an hour. I can't keep up with him. Holy cow, he's running at me so fast. Oh my gosh. He's still there. I can feel the line streaking. There he is. There he is. <laughs> there he is. There he is, baby. And we're on. Feels like another little guy, I think. I can't quite tell. Yeah. That skippy got my blood pumping. I wasn't sure how big it was, guys. He just took off with that spawn sack. This another squeak, but another fish nonetheless. We got two skippers getting bites, so that's a very good sign. And we probably have five or six bites so far. They've all been very, very light bites. Even the two fish we caught were pretty light bites. A lot of them have been dropping it and coming it back, so I slacked up the lines a little bit. I'm gonna give them a little more slack line, so hopefully they'll take that spawn bag and they'll be able to swallow it or get it down pretty deep before they have a chance to spit it back out. But these fish are definitely being pretty lethargic on this cold morning. Got him. Got him, guys. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. He's jumping out there, baby. He's jumping out there, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, this fish has been ripping line, guys. He's coming up here. Oh, it's a beautiful steely, guys. That is a beautiful, man, that's a beautiful Lake Superior steel. A nice big hen. Check out this fish, guys. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish, man. <laughs> Mission accomplished, baby. We caught a beautiful steelhead, guys. Mission accomplished. What a beautiful Lake Superior steelhead. Something that I noticed on these Lake Superior steelhead that's different than the ones we get in Lake Michigan is the orange tips that are on the fins. I don't know if you guys can see that on her dorsal fin, but she's got an orange tip on her fin, and a lot of her bottom fins, too, have that orange tip as well. But just beautiful, beautiful fish, man. This is a healthy Lake Superior steelhead, and we're going to get her right back in the water. Woo! Well, I couldn't be happier. Mission accomplished, guys. We landed a beautiful, beautiful hen steelhead. We got her right back in the water. That was a really nice, healthy wild fish on the upper size class for Lake Superior too. I would say that fish is in that eight pound range, which is a dandy fish for Lake Superior. Something that I thought you guys might find interesting is when I put my rod holders in the sand this morning, I had to put my rod holders in the water because the sand out of the water was all frozen solid. I couldn't get them to stick in the sand. And now the water line is about a foot below the rod holders. It's just crazy how the water levels on the Great Lakes can fluctuate like this. It's almost like a tide system. One of my other favorite things to do while I surf fish as well is to look for beach glass and other cool rocks along the shoreline. As you can see here, I found a little beach glass. What this is, is it's just glass that's been broken into the Great Lakes and it gets shifted through the sand and weathered over time and it turns into a pretty cool treasure actually. It makes some nice cool formations and cool colors. It's unfortunate that it has to come from broken glass, but at the same time, at least it makes into a cool treasure and it's actually very sought after. There's a ton of places all along the shoreline of the Great Lakes where people go nuts for beach glass hunting. Yep, get him, get him, get him. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, feels like a pretty good fish. Yep, 
Run, 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 run. Man, he's feisty, hey? He's a feisty one, yeah. Yeah, he's got some shoulders on this one, for sure. Probably about like that last one you landed, bro. Wow, is that a beautiful fish, guys. Look at that beautiful fish. Greg, double stripe buck, buddy. Well, mission accomplished. We caught a couple beautiful fish out here. It took two days, but we got the job done and finally found some steelhead. Found some open water where we were able to surf fish and there was no ice, so very, very thankful for that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get packed up here and uh, go catch some brookies. I've still got some shiners. I'm running pretty low on those. And then I've got uh, suckers down here. Okay, probably just some medium shiners. Okay. Did it go all the way through? Mm -mm. What? Well, there's definitely plenty of ice. That is for sure, guys. We're gonna check some depths, see what kind of depth we're looking at here. But there's a big animal trail, big game trail that comes down here. It just looks like there's some giant old tracks in it. I don't know if it was a moose, it's a bunch of deer, something, but this is such a cool setting though. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Out here, buddy. Let me get past the ice first, huh? My bad. Six feet. Oh, 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 getting a bite, guys. Getting a bite, getting a bite, getting a bite. Oh my gosh. Got him, got him, baby. Got him, baby. Oh, it's a perch. It's a perch. Oh it's a little perch. It's a little perch, guys. Little perch, we'll put him right back. Not quite big enough to eat. Oh my gosh, it was a perch. I'm sitting here thinking, Brookie sitting here thinking, way, baby. big brookie, baby. At least my metal's still alive and healthy, though. Let's send him back down there. Man, he's really kicking. He looks really good. Got him, got him. Oh, dude, getting bigger on the perch, guys. Wow, we might even have a keeper here. Oh, getting a bite, guys. Getting a bite. There we go, we got something nice. Oh, oh, nice brookie, Greg. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. Well, as you can see, we got a stocked lake uh, brookie here but uh, we'll take what we can get it's been kind of tough even on the lake here today but we're getting a few small ones and some perch but we'll take this home for sure oh my goodness oh look at the colors on that one man wow guys check out the colors on this brookie
Oh, I'm getting a bite right here on my dead stick, guys. Oh my gosh, missed him. Oh my gosh, we've just been getting absolutely terrorized by a little perch. Greg has caught a couple nice brook trout, but that's been the only trout we've caught. I've been fishing hard, I've caught nothing but perch. We've caught a couple keepers, but a lot, a lot of small perch. Oh shoot. Another perch, another perch, another small perch. It's just cool we're having action though. This would be a perfect place to bring some kids to fish. You know, you have good action, but at the same time, you have the opportunity to catch a really, really quality fish. Oh my God, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just got absolutely slammed on this jig. I was not paying attention, guys. I got a heck of a bite. Oh, my minnow on my bobber's getting nervous. He's starting to twitch. Oh, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Another perch, another perch. Oh my goodness. Getting me just absolutely excited every time. Is this perch bite is just off the chain right now. It is just off the chain with dink perch. I've never seen such a good dink perch bite. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude, he just swam away with it, man. He's just swimming away with it. Like, it looks like such a promising good bite. Which one's gonna get bit first? Who's it gonna be? Who's, who's it gonna be? Oh, 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 right here, right here. Right here. Right here, he's there. Oh yeah, he's there, he's chowing it down. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, he's gone. Oh, that's the biggest one of the day. Look at this perch, he's puking up minnows. Well, we got the shanties packed up and uh, I believe it's time to start heading back, guys. I'm getting the butterflies right now. We've been, uh, we've been fishing hard the last 10 days. Greg and I have been out on the road for the last 10 days, traveling to some very, very cool places. The last couple episodes that you've seen have been from this trip, and this is the last little bit of fishing we've had on this trip. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're gonna have to tear down our camp and drive about eight to 10 hours back home. So it's always bittersweet when a trip ends, but we're already talking about the next adventure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we will see you back here in a week or two in our next video.